Hey guys, it's Simeon from Clockwork Money Team with another quick video today about the main indexes and components that you should be aware of uh, before starting to trade in the stock market. As usual, this is not financial advice. You are 100% responsible of all your financial decisions. Do your own due diligence. So to start off, uh, the Dow Jones, uh, also known as the DJ30, uh, the uh, leverage ETF for it is IYY. Uh, the Dow Jones is one of the oldest indexes in the stock market. Uh, it's composed of the lar 30 largest companies uh, in the US, but mostly in terms of scope and influence. So for example, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Caterpillar, Boeing, Goldman Sachs, uh, Honeywell, Walmart, you know, companies not necessarily making the most money or in terms of price to ratio, price to sales ratio that are expensive or not expensive. It's really in terms of influence publicly. Secondly, uh, we've got the S&P 500, also known as the SPX or the SPY, which is its leveraged ETF. Uh, the S&P 500 is mostly composed of the large 500 largest companies in terms of capitalization. So, uh, the price, the profit, and really in terms of finance, what's the company doing, how powerful it is, yes, on an influential, influential sorry, perspective, but mostly on a monetary perspective. So you've got Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Visa, JP Morgan, j and &J. And thirdly, the NASDAQ 100 or the NDX or even the leveraged EDF, ATF, sorry, the QQQ. Uh, it's mainly composed of, again, in terms of capitalization, uh, technology stocks, but there's also a bunch of international overseas stocks, and it's really known as, as an index for growth stocks, more high risk, high reward, but stocks that uh, are technology based and mostly growth. Uh, some of them are not. So some of their components, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, so really based on technology. That's what it differentiates itself by. Another important uh, component of the stock market is the VIX, or known as the CBOE Volatility Index. It basically measures the probability of the volatility in the next 30 days for the whole stock market. So usually there's a direct correlation between stocks going down and the VIX going up. And if the VIX goes down, stocks go down. On a regular stock market, the VIX will be between 25, 26, maybe 28 dollars and 15 so usually when it goes above those numbers 25 to 28 you're seeing uh, above average volatility for an example uh, this is the peak of the 2020 crash the vix was about 83 85 dollars so you see that stocks were going down to all-time low not all-time lows but crashing down and the vix was actually pumping straight up so this is not the kind of etf you hold long term it's really just something to measure the volatility in the stock market now concerning more secondhand uh, components in the stock market that I like to look at and trade sometimes. Uh, first off, there's the S5FY. This is used to uh, measure the number of stocks in the S&P 500 that are above, above sorry, the 50-day moving average. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty wide trading range. And so when in the 2020 crash, for example, a lot of them were around 5% above, uh, under, above, yeah, sorry, 5% above the 50-day uh, moving average, which usually is a good indication when the, it goes to those lows to when to buy. Uh, not that this is a good thing to buy in a hold or you should buy the stock market when it's down there, but it's a good indicator of when stocks may be oversold, if you know what I mean. Another two other interesting leverage ETFs are SQQQ and TQQQ. So SQQQ uh, represents the uh, three times, both are three times leverage ETF. So as the NASDAQ moves 1%, these will move 3%. That's an example of a three times leverage ETF. So they represent QQQ. And as you can see here, the SQQQ is basically a index that shorts the NASDAQ. So as the NASDAQ goes up, the SQQQ will go down. If the NASDAQ goes down, SQQQ will go up. So it's a good swing trade type of play. I would never hold this, even TQQQ, on the long term. These are not really just hold QQQ if you were to hold on the long term. But as you can see, TQQQ going down heavy here as the NASDAQ is going down. So it, since it's three times leverage, even though it's less expensive, it's a leverage ETF. As it says, uh, 
it's going to move uh, a lot, well, not a lot faster, but quite a bit more than a regular QQQ, if that makes sense. Um, other than that, there's TLT, uh, which represents the uh, iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. So it's a good way to see uh, the ETFs here, uh, the, sorry, the bonds in the stock market, mostly the US stock market, to see where they are right now, not looking so good. Uh, I don't really use that as a component. I've got it on my watch list, but I don't really watch it. I'm not a big knowing. Uh, I don't have a lot of knowledge, sorry, about bonds or anything like that. But it's uh, interesting to know that there's an index uh, or an ETF, rather, sorry, that represents that. Uh, other than that, there's the FTSE 100 or the uh, UK 100, which is basically the top 100 uh, companies in the London Stock Exchange. Uh, there are many other such international ETFs. I'm just saying this went out to be an example. So a lot of ETFs can uh, come out as, as a, just an example here, the UK 100 index. You could have the China index and there are many other indexes around the world that represent basically a country's index. Like the S&P is really spe specific to the US, but you can have the US 100 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so that's basically stocks in the US. It's a whole lot bigger than some of them, some of others, sorry, because obviously the U.S. is where most of the volume is, but just pointed out, pointed that out because there are a couple of indexes that are international and you can trade them as much as you want to, if you want to. It's a good indication of how stocks are doing worldwide as well. Uh, and finally, one thing you can, you will probably hear is FANG. I don't think this is an actual, uh, yeah, it is, wow. So uh, FANG is re basically represented, is it? I don't know if that's the one. Uh, I've never actually checked if it was in stock or an in index or whatever, but FANG is basically an abbreviation for the five, uh, five, right? yeah, five biggest stocks in the stock market, in the US stock market, sorry. So you've got Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Now Netflix, some people are saying it's kind of overrated, NVIDIA's the end right now taking over, so see it as you wish but uh fang is a good example when usually fangs overall are down you can say all right the market's down as a whole it's kind of a mini mini s p 500 if i could put it that way but uh yeah there's an abbreviation you might hear from time to time hope you guys enjoyed the video if you've got any questions or comments uh put those down below we'll do our best to answer them and if you want to join our group chat uh at clockwork money on instagram TikTok, and youtube looking forward to trading with you guys